listening to the power of inspiration and awakening radio with Julia Griffin to master a higher frequency for a new state of mind. Once you walked in a forest of splendor in which everything you did and everything you thought was aligned, it is possible at this time to begin to return to the old knowledge. Intuitive healer and manifester Julia Griffin is here to talk about this unique time in history when all sentient beings, animals, plants, trees, and the earth are intent on creating this change. The wolves awakened her to the most incredible light, which opened gifts and brought knowledge that she longs to share. You are creators, and you are born to be creators of beauty, possibility, and joy. Join Julia on a journey into a beautiful and magical world where amazing possibilities exist. Let us help open the door. The power of inspiration and awakening with Julia Griffin starts right now. Hello, everyone. I'm Julia Griffin, and you're listening to The Power of Inspiration and Awakening on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with us for the next hour and let us help you experience a higher vibration and a new state of mind. For those of you who don't know me, I awakened with wolves. When I met a wolf, he taught to me just as people talk, and they taught me to read the energy of the heart. I could intuitively hear plants, animals, and people's thoughts, and I became an intuitive healer and writer as a result. You can find me at onetrueself.com, O-N-E, trueself.com. Today's guest is Suzanne Worsley. She's been here before, and I'm delighted to have her back. So welcome back, Suzanne. Yeah, thanks for having me. That's mm-hmm. exciting. So let me tell everyone about you. She's a healing, energy healing practitioner, intuitive, and psychic empath for more than two decades, She teaches about consciousness studies and energy work and offers spiritual tours in Peru and Sedona, Arizona. She's the author of an energy healer's book of dying and lives in White Bear, Minnesota. She recently wrote The Confident Empath. That's when she was here before. And we had a great time talking about how to move more easily through life as an empath. And her book offers many tools to help with grounding, boundaries, and all the things you need to function if you're an empath like we are. So let's begin for people who aren't sure what is an empath. How would you define that? Yeah, thanks for asking because there is a little bit of confusion on that. Um, In the confident empath, I describe it as this. We as humans all have a birthright to be empathic, meaning we get to stand in other people's shoes energetically and emotionally so that we can be one and we can understand and have compassion and insight. But empathing isn't just standing in their shoes. It's grabbing those shoes and taking those shoes and making those shoes your own. (laughs) So what we're doing is, is we're actually robbing the energy of others. And it's a lot different than just simply having empathy. Mm -hmm. And so it's like if I'm doing a reading, I know what the other person is being, is thinking and feeling, but I have a boundary right? that doesn't override my own feelings. And I think is um, particularly for a young empath, you're just like, oh, I got so upset when that person came over or why did they say that to me or why do I feel depressed? And it's often what you're picking up on. So I'd say you've got to learn to read what you're picking up on. Mm-hmm. you've got to figure out who it's coming from and you've got to learn to avoid that vibration or deal with it differently if it's constantly in your energy field. Yeah. And the very first way to do that is really understanding how the energy actually works in terms of your own auric field and your chakras, etc. And so this is a skill set that can be trainable. Like you, for example, and myself also are trained professional empaths. My job when I do my work is to merge with someone's field and body so that I can know what I need to know to assist it and move it. But if we don't have that information or those boundaries, we're just like, we're like a sponge walking through life and not only people. And when I write in that new book, it's all about everything. It's plants and animals, it's cosmic energy, it's spirit energy, it's land energy and buildings. And so we empaths are really getting a run for our money these days if we don't know what we're doing. Right? <laughs> which, is, which is the absolute reason we're talking today. Yeah. I'm going to say that I think most empaths have probably 
under the surface when they learn to have boundaries and credible abilities. It's probably easier for us to create and imagine things and see new things than it is for the average person. But right now, it's also very easy for empaths to get overwhelmed by the news, social media, events, and the overall energy. Totally. I think myself included, a lot of us are not watching the news the same mm -hmm. anymore. I'll monitor, I'll keep an eye on things, but I certainly don't let it run in my household. I don't like the frequency of it. I don't, I'm very careful on what I watch. I'm extremely careful on where I go, large crowds, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, we have to really, if we choose, obviously we have to be very mm -hmm. careful in making our choices. Right. Because you want the wide span of being able to pick up on vibrations, but I don't want to pick up on a hundred people in a store. So right. I'm very careful about the times of the day that I go to stores and the day itself. And I'll look out and say, is the traffic bad? I'll go, yes. I'll go, okay, I'll go tomorrow. Or yeah. if it feels really weird, I'll just come home and do it on another day. Yeah, I, I, I am sort of like that also. Or if I do choose to go and or need to go for whatever reason, I just ramp the heck up out of that bubble and really walk around like, you know, almost like an armadillo all wrapped up in my shell. And it's like, nope. You know, you're just very careful, very conscious, very, in, you know, intentional. So we can work through it if you are having the skill set for sure. Right. Because I think for everyone who's awakening, I mean, when you awaken, you become more sensitive mm -hmm. and you have greater awareness. And a lot of people are waking up right now, which is a wonderful thing, but you have to deal with it. You can't think that, oh, I'm just having a bad day. Oh, this was just so upsetting. You've got to constantly monitor that. I will say with the news, I usually read it. And if I find myself like getting really wrapped up in it, then I think, hmm, don't click through, get out of this, exit out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And then cut, 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 right? Right. Little cutting cords and making intentional cuts. And, and what I teach in my sessions and books and, and classes is that we empaths are very important right now on this planet. We are part of this process of the awakening and we are here and it doesn't make us cooler or better, but it makes us cooler or better in terms of what we're supposed to be doing. Meaning we are designed to feel times 10 on behalf of those that aren't awakened and or are not feeling so that we can actually intuitively bring that into our body, feel the feel, analyze the feel, and then move the feel through to source mm -hmm. energy. And that's what we're designed to do. But if we're not told that, what's so scary is, is we don't understand what is and isn't ours. So everything becomes ours. So when we say, ask, where did this energy come from? I walked in a grocery store and I started to get agitated. And I thought, why am I getting agitated? And there was this lady that was just talking, talking, talking. And I got like a snip, like a screen of what her life was like. And I thought, oh, block her. I'm fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and again, it's not judgment, Julia. We're not judging. No, We're no just I'm just saying it's inappropriate for my yeah. energy field. Yeah, exactly. And so I think when empaths are starting out, they're like, well, I can't do that. That's, you know, that's judging somebody or that's mean or I'm supposed mm -hmm. to. And all these things, all these belief systems get in the way. I think when we get skilled, we just make very distinct decisions with no judgment attached. It's not about that. It's just about protection of the field. No, and I had someone who had been associated with a group or a cult that she no longer wanted to be with. And she said, I want to tell you what they're saying on Facebook. I'm like, you didn't block those people, but you want to get away from the group more than anything. Oh. Yeah, I said, you've got to block all those people, emails from all those people, friendships yep. from all those people. You can't let it in if you're trying to get away from it. Yeah, I've had clients that are doing like the divorce situation or whatever, and they literally will pull out the phone and say, do you want to see what he or she said? And I'm like, absolutely not. And that shouldn't be in your phone either, because there's cords, right? There's right. cords and activations to all of that energy. So this is a learning curve for sure. So it's really great that you have these kinds of shows for people that can understand when they don't have this at their fingertips, right? Oh, no one can tell you, but an empath <laughs> who's practiced. It's yep. true. Yeah. No one ever told me that. And it took a long time for me to figure it out or why I would get so upset when I saw certain people. Our energy, our energy fields are not, I call it synergy. When like you and I are talking and the energy is growing. That's mm -hmm. synergy. I don't want to be around people that take me in the opposite direction. And that's right. choice. Right, right. 
And it's self-preservation, actually. <laughs> I know right now it is. Well, let's talk a little bit because this will make people feel better. The empaths, we need you to continue waking up. Yes. We need you to hold the, a vision of your personal world in the most wonderful way that it could ever possibly be. And we need for you to feel like quiet joy and calm instead of moving all around energetically, because those are the energies that really help the world. And I believe that all the people who are awakening, we all have a different vision and feeling of what a good life is and how we want it to be. And it's important, like colors in the rainbow, everybody's colors are needed. Yep. It's like puzzle pieces too. And that's mm-hmm. how I teach it oftentimes. My piece is not the same shape or colors as yours. And when we put them all together, it makes a beautiful scene, but we don't want to all be the same. We want to be uniquely different. And that's when we start to honor how other people work and how they you know, perceive and how they show up in life, et cetera. But yeah, what I think is so odd though, Julia, is people don't think that, oh, I'm just this little mom in White Bear Lake. I don't make any difference. I'm just this little gal in Minnesota. It, mm-hmm. No, you do. You do because every thought, every emotion, and every action that you take pours into that collective field. And we are actually creating our, our world every second of every second of the day. And when we finally awaken to that concept in and of itself, the game changes. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about collective consciousness. Right now, we're in a higher collective consciousness because of what we're talking about. There's a collective consciousness that is more or less like rational about how we move through life. Then there's a lower, I call it mass consciousness, a lower mass consciousness, that if you get stuck in that, it's really hard to get out because the emotions and thoughts are so low. And I'll give you an example. When my father died, of course, I loved him. I was really sad about it. But I would start crying and I couldn't stop. And I even knew this was abnormal. So I started asking, what is the matter? And I got it. I was stuck in lower collective grief. Hmm. And it wasn't that it just healed the whole experience, but it was that I could say, oh, that's lower collective grief. I can be sad without getting pulled into those emotions. And I think any place that we have a deep problem we tend to get pulled down. So if we pull ourselves up, let's say through affirmations, meditations, living differently, we go up to collective or higher collective consciousness, and that makes a path, like trail ba- blazing a path through the jungle that yeah. other people can follow. So you can be a housewife in Minnesota, and maybe you had a habit of being irritated every day at four o'clock when your children came home. When you overcome that irritation, you're actually helping everyone around you. Exactly. And we do change the world. One person changes the world, either negatively or positively, constantly. And I think what else floats around for me in that collective world is the world of programming. And, you know, we can get side (laughs) side blinded in a second and we can get triggered in a heartbeat. And so I think it's important for us to understand the all is in that 4D realm of craziness. And so we don't want to even mm, judge ourselves in right. we get if we get lost or if we if we sink into that lower one because we're just playing the game of everything. And so it's about it's about being intentional in the moment and choosing wisely, right? Right. And we're all going to get messed up some of the time. That's sure. human nature. It's just we want to get better and better at pulling ourselves out. Yep. And alchemy, they call that shortening the swing. Yeah. We're not swinging as far with highs and lows. We're more going this way. Or shifting the paradigm faster and faster. It's just, right. okay, I got hit. I got taken. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm in, And then pull into that neutral zone and just go, okay, now intentionally, I'm going to be responsible for pulling myself up. And I think that that's a great skill set. And we all have it if we would just practice it, right? Yes. And there's a good game with that. Like, how would it feel if I felt twice as happy tomorrow or this oh. afternoon? What would it be like if I had three or four times the energy I have now? What would it be like if I were happier with my overall life? And you start thinking about that and the universe answers your questions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. That law of attraction is either a really good buddy or kind of a problem. <laughs> yeah. Cause the one where you run around saying, what am I going to do? And your friends won't even answer the phone. Oh, that's <laughs> the worst one. <laughs> they don't know what they're going to do either. How can yeah. they help you? 
<laughs> or or my favorite is when one starts complaining, then the other one jumps on and says, you think you got it bad. And then it goes mm -hmm. lower. And then the third one jumps on and says, yeah, but and then it goes lower. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. So that's something that everybody can try to avoid. Yeah. But I think just the fact if we can just perceive that this happens and not beat up on ourselves too much when we're low and start asking questions or seeing it differently when we want to go higher, that that would be a really big change. Mm -hmm. I see, also see a lot of people saying, oh, we're about to ascend. Well, personally, I think we will ascend or go to a higher level when more of us know how to control. I shouldn't say control. I should say direct our emotions and thoughts mm -hmm. and images. Mm-hmm. And I think we ascend and descend all at the same time. When you really think about it, there isn't really mm -hmm. a direction anyway. So it's all happening and it already has happened and it already will happen. And that confuses people too. So that's a little tough. You know? I know. Yeah. And presence is so important. That's why the word is a present, right? I mean, that's the mm -hmm. gift. So, so yeah, that's in the, yeah. So the other thing I say is draw a circle in your heart and think about being in your heart chakra. Oh, because that I makes you that. feel present really quickly. I love that. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. tough right now, though, because, you know, we're in this silly pol political year. We're in a hard time. We are literally are in really some massive astrological stuff. Mm -hmm. We're in, you know, we, we equin we're we equinoxing as we speak, you know, I know. recording, which is fascinating to me, by the way. Uh, you know, we're doing a lot of eclipsing either solar and or lunar. And so these are crazy, crazy times. And there's a lot of people that can feel an angst and they don't have a connection to what that is. And that's a dangerous place to be because what we do is we assume it's all personal. And so right. in my opinion, the more somebody studies energy, the better off you are because you can start to dissect it and pull it apart a little bit and not just own a hundred percent of it. And I was going to say too, that both of us have noticed that people who take classes or work with us regularly are not experiencing much of that agitation and yes. I've always tried to leave this up to free will, but I think it's a time that if you know someone who's any good at what they do, you should take their classes or have more sessions more frequently because it's and, hard and to keep it up for yourself. My membership, I've also, um, I have an online membership and every month we do a webinar, part of their, the part of their membership package. And I have been doing more and more teaching on the webinar in terms of the hologram and how this is all changing. And this is why you're feeling what you're feeling, but you're never going to see it and you're never going to hear it on the news. And so it's important to find that person that you resonate with that gives you the information that can give you that faith and trust and so-called hope to move forward without that freak out mode. Right. I know because people have that and it's not abnormal for this time because in political, I should just say the years during presidential races, yeah. the news tends to be worse to force you to choose one way or the other. Yeah. And it's so inauthentic and it's kind of, you know, it's not a big surprise, but it's, no. still, disappointing. <laughs> it's still disappointing that humans will I know. go to that level. Right. Yes, it is. It's really sort of sad. But yeah. the thing is, is if you don't know what you're doing and you're swinging back and forth, you should be taking a class or getting regular readings because they teach you what higher vibrations feel like. Right. As soon as you feel those vibrations, you will want more of them. So that's already directing your energy more the way that it should go. And it really changes the fuel of how our body works. And so how I teach it is that we're a vehicle and there's only really two kinds of of fuel and one of them is fear and one of them is love. So when we're in that fear fuel, it's like, oh, I should really take a class or I have to get better at this mm -hmm. or I need to meditate. And that's all fear-based because it feels like, ugh, ugh, right? Yeah. But when we switch to that love fuel, it's like, oh no, no, I get to meditate and I'm choosing mm -hmm. to go to that class. And so it will really empower you and it feels completely different. And then you said it, you get hooked on that, right? I mean, that's the yeah. Yeah, because if you just do it, even say for two or three months, things will start to move into the flow. Yeah. And if you're spiritual enough to stick with a class like this for three months, you're going to want to keep that flow, babe. And and the other thing I tell my people, too, is don't beat yourself up if you're saying, oh, I'm going to meditate every day at 6 a.m., you know, if you skip your one day, don't think that you're a bad person <laughs> because you chose to sleep in and maybe you really needed that. And so these are things that we don't also want to make another to-do list about. We want to actually feel the feeling of I get to. 
No, and I'm laughing. I'm laughing at myself because of daylight savings time. I was getting up at either six thirty or quarter of seven. Yeah. And that gave me such a nice long time for a morning meditation and to get everything done. And I don't do much better than about seven thirty or quarter of eight now. And so my <laughs> meditation is like little, but I know that I'll get back. I'm just not gonna get too upset about it. That's pretty right on where I was. I was doing like an hour, hour and 45 minutes in there too. And mine went down to like the hour. And then I had to <laughs> come in town and it went out the window completely for about four days. And I'm like, but what you said is true. My body itself was was yearning to get back to that quiet time. That's when you right. know that you've got something going because the humanness of you <laughs> is yearning for that quiet time. And that's really cool. Yeah, and it's like one voice is running around saying, I can't function unless you give me a few minutes for myself and meditating. Yeah, yeah. Which I really can't anymore. Yeah. So I don't guess we have to worry about that. But I think all the things that we want to do, if you can visualize that you're doing them, you will get there. It may be a lot slower than what you want, but it will happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Consistency, yeah. Which is another example of a hologram. Yeah. That people well, usually are not aware of. <laughs> and, and I think it's important, too, to throw in the gratitude and be excited about what it is that you're doing. So, again, that law of attraction follows you, because if we're worrying about all the things I didn't do right and I didn't do right, that's only multiplying, you know, that whole entire energy field. Mm -hmm. so I oftentimes say, you know, own your work and be excited and grateful for doing the work, because that's going to yeah. make it even higher. And so we're in charge. It's like big fat knobs on a radio. And we're the ones no one told me at the beginning of this journey, that I actually had the ability to change knobs. I thought I was just this little being down here that all of a sudden spirit found me and they're like, you're gonna do this. And I didn't know that I was like, Oh, today, I'm going to turn these way down. Or today, mm -hmm. I'm going to turn these way up. You know, so this is important for us to understand we're up, we're in charge of this stuff, right? Oh, definitely. I yeah. mean, I think, I think we can honestly say for most people, they're creating through their own visualizations and their own thoughts, at least 70 or 80% of their reality. There may be other factors, but I always say, if you have a problem, there's no way around it. You're at least 10% of the problem. So let's work on the 10%. Right, right. <laughs> And I do a lot of that. I do a lot of like, okay, I'm flying down the highway and I hit traffic and now I'm going to be late. And instead of freaking out, I literally will say out loud in my car, wow, Suzanne, why did you co-create traffic right now? And it just mm -hmm. switches that paradigm. And then you start to go, huh, there might be a reason. And then you go through it without the anger and the irritation, right? So it just, again, gives you a responsibility for the co-creation instead of feeling manipulated by the victimization. Yeah, I do seven blue breaths in, hold it for seven pink and breathe out for seven white. And it's like when I get to seven of those breaths, the traffic is gone. I think, oh, shoot, it was me again. Oh, that's a, that's a hood. I love the thing. I know. It's really funny. <laughs> that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Always go when you get in this certain little agitated mood, you attract all the traffic. Oh, well. All right. Well, at least I remembered and I didn't sit in it for 30 minutes. And by the way, you stop breathing, which is another thing I've been watching mm -hmm. myself. I did a quick little Instagram the other day, reminding people how much we hold our breath. <laughs> it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. And I do also say that things that are aligned with you relax your body. Like when we think about that heart chakra, the circle on the chest. Mm -hmm. And things that are out, you're out of sync with your inner self when you catch yourself contracting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can check into the body too, which is kind of fun just to do something different. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's a lot of self-responsibility this year. Yeah. I try to make it fun. So you're feeling, you know what I'm saying? It's not just always your breath. It's not just always your mind. Sometimes it's your body or it moves around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I think body scanning is one of the coolest skill sets to know because mm -hmm. you can stand in like say the line at Walmart or wherever your big box store <laughs> is and you're frustrated and you're irritated because of the shopping experience and the lights and the people and the screaming kids and you can find yourself like already going and in two yeah. minutes you can play a game with yourself like you're saying you have a lot of opportunity to just bring yourself to presence and it changes your whole entire reality and that to me is amazing. Those little aspects to life are amazing to me that in that chaos, you can be calm. You can pop back in. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so that is pretty incredible. I always say that Walmart is a test of how well my meditation has been working. <laughs> I always say I would love to teach classes in Walmart, but can you see like, you know, aisle 17, what's going on? There's 27 people learning something. <laughs> I know. I mean, if you can make it through Walmart without having a negative thought, you're doing really well. Seriously, seriously. Or even the parking lot, God forbid, right? <laughs> yes. I was, okay, so I was going to ask you this. So empaths tend to have very strong emotions that sometimes affect people around them emotionally. Like I know a child that's already an empath. She's 14. She's very intuitive. But when she gets upset and cries, it's like her family, whole family flips out. And that happens a lot around empaths because we have yeah. strong, really strong emotions. Right. So what do you say about dealing with that or getting your feelings hurt and being upset about it for two or three days? Well, first of all, if you have a child, it's really behooves you to learn what the heck your child is doing so that there's <laughs> shame attached and shutting down the child's gifts. Uh, I think that's really critical. But the 2D realm itself, the, the, the realm of 2D is changing. Therefore, the 2D chakra for us, which is our sacral feeling center, is changing, as is the heart in the 40s. So we're changing because it's all changing. And the feels are coming out more. We have been dummied down as a human race that we think feel. You know, let's say, hey, hey, Julia, how do you feel about that? And you're like, fine, that's not a feel. <laughs> Good, that's not a feel. You know, so we're starting to be able to feel more because these empaths are coming in and they're activating the actual 2D realm to feel more. But mm -hmm. then you've got the kids that are getting pummeled by the feel and so it's important for us to a not make fun of them and honor them and understand how that process goes but my suggestion oftentimes especially with kids too is make sure that you get to the true feel because a lot of us never get to the true feel for example i can be mad or i can be angry but that's not the true feel no that true feel is maybe i'm invisible and not seen or heard by my mom right now that hurts me because i feel abandoned and neglected those are all deeper feels mm -hmm. that i think we need to start working with so that we can actually communicate and work through those and change the actual vibration whereas if i'm just mad or you're crazy or you're the sensitive one i'm going to stuff it and nothing's going to come of it well, exactly. I think she's one of those children that has parents that are slightly muggle. So <laughs> I tell them that she gets overwhelmed yes. to take away all the stimuli, to be very quiet and to be very gentle and, and let her move through it at her own pace. Come back to it at another time when people are not in the vibration of of smashing energies. For example, mm -hmm. she's so heightened and they're not understanding. It's like a chaotic smash, right? So right. what we want to do is we want to wait till everybody's at a different frequency, a little more aligned and then have an actual conversation. <laughs> and this is when we want to educate ourselves more about the feelings. And these are hard because I do a class on my empath book and I'm telling you, you'll see these 30, 40 year olds just bawling when we're doing this one exercise because they're finally feeling the things they felt when they were 14 and didn't have the courage to say, right? Right. And I think that's something we should talk about when we come back. So I'm talking to Suzanne Worthley. We're getting ready to go to break. We're talking about all kinds of things that will help you if you're an empath or a sensitive person. And we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Julia Griffin. You're listening to The Power of Inspiration and Awakening and Transformation Talk Radio. I have my special guest here today, Suzanne Wordley, and we're talking about ways to deal with being an empath, the importance of it, what you can add to life, and how to get through all the things that happen on a daily basis at this point in time. So Suzanne and I were talking during the break about how empaths have this thing of getting really upset. And one thing that I've learned is I can get really angry or really hurt and I won't feel that way in 48 hours. So I wait 48 hours to deal with it. Suzanne, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I remember a time when I felt super, super emotional because I felt like I was being judged by somebody or something. It was actually something that happened in my local paper. And my intuitive self wanted to just attack and feel <laughs> anger and throw anger back, et cetera. So I typed out the most angry, horrible thing, and then I put it on pause. 
And I did do the 48 hours. I revisited it again. And then I thought, there's no way in heck I need to send that out. That's just silly. But I think it's honoring the fact that we do have that crazy moment possibly, but then knowing in the long run, we really want to know the truth of where that emotion is at in 48 hours because it will change. And it's usually something that we're working with. You were talking about people having emotions come up. And I think it's a particularly emotional time. I've noticed that my past memories and most empaths are intuitive. Just so you know, if you're listening, have a difficult childhood. That's just one of the things that we got. But I notice that the memories don't bother me anymore. It's just the emotions that are attached to the memories, which is interesting to me. That's super interesting. I'm finding that a lot of people that I'm working with and and I'm teaching is that we're actually kind of closing our files of mm-hmm. our past and we're going through that. So that's super cool that you may indeed not have at the time of that younger years been able to feel the feels to the extent that you needed to, right? right. So I can close the file on it, but now I'm activating the feel center, which is super cool because when you activate your feel center, we activate that whole realm of feel. So again, the empath works on behalf of themselves for all of their essences of who they are in this lifetime but also all their past lives, future lives, et cetera, Mm -hmm. but also the collective. And so it's a big job, right? Yeah. But it's exciting that we can do it. Oh gosh. Are you kidding? It is such a cool gift. I mean, I have a little nephew who just bought a new home and he's like, Hey auntie, can you come out and check out my new place? And man, if I wouldn't have cleared the energy of that building and that land, (laughs) would have had a heck of a time because it was really residual yucky stuff. And we can gift that to people. That's an honor, right? It really is. And a lot of times people's lives change completely just because they get cleared. I'm going to jump back to the memories quickly. Of course, I remember the emotions, just like we all remember the emotions, but not in such a way that I could deal with them. Now I can deal with this made me feel this way and I interpret it as this, which That's probably awesome. isn't correct, but I can look at it. And that's really because you've been becoming so skilled over the years at finding neutral, changing belief systems, looking at from a higher standpoint, aligning soul contracts, all the stuff that we get to learn if we choose to puts things into a different perspective. It's a way more exciting world than the one that we see on TV, folks. I can tell you that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, especially on those reality shows that aren't real. That's my funnest one. (laughs) I think if people could see what happens when you really begin to align I'll just call it the light and see more of the unseen world that it's the most amazing magical place you will ever find. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and relating back to that nephew, you know, it's, it's tangible stuff that you can own in a matter of minutes, because like if there was standing in this one particular area of this home, the ley line underneath the home was not secure. And somebody like me who does quantum work can go in and secure that ley line. So they're, actually feeling dizzy and nauseous in this spot in their home. And when I'm done with the work, that's completely gone. And those are really big things because you're standing in that spot, oftentimes in your home on a daily basis, and you have no idea it's all invisible world. And we can fix that. I think that's really an honor. I was thinking I could feel that line vibrate when you were talking about first finding it. Yes. (laughs) And it makes it, and it makes you like this. And so, you know, I had a kid once who had a really bad ley line right in front of her kitchen sink. And every time she'd do the dishes, it was like, whoa, whoa. And you know, (laughs) that can be fixed. Right. Right. So a lot of the bad ways that we feel, we don't have to feel that way. No, no. Uh Uh-uh. And I think what's important about, understanding energies that are not mine. You said it earlier. The important thing to learn in that skill set is ask, is this mine? Because if we don't discern that it's not mine, the human psyche will make it yours. I'm going to make it mine by the end of the week if I don't have any other reason to not be mine, right? So this can really screw up relationships really bad, right? And I think too, probably 50 to 70% of what we feel if we're an empath, it's not ours. No, no. uh -uh. Yeah, for sure. And especially now, because the lines of dimensions are so wiggly and overlapping and twisting, we're feeling collective energies from eons ago. Mm -hmm. We're feeling collective memories, past, present and future, because there is no time in those realms. And we can get very confused if we don't know what we're doing. So this discernment process for the true full body empath has just exponentially grown over the last even three years. Yeah, and it's like a lot of memories, I think, both good and bad are coming in from those really powerful lifetimes. Yes, 
Yes, because again, I believe once you activate the memory, you make peace with the feel, the actual file folder is going back to the Akash and that's what we're doing. We're collapsing. And I think yeah. that's super interesting work. Yeah, I think that too. It's just like it's sort of erased. Mm -hmm. Now it's free energy for however we want to use it or however we want to create with it. And the ridiculous karma is no longer attached, which is the really cool thing, because we don't have to play the flip-flop game anymore because it just doesn't suffice in this energy field. So I think that's in and of itself is one of the greatest reasons to do this work. And I think, you know, we were talking before about how people can get so twisted up in their emotions and their thoughts and the lower vibrations. And a lot of that is that our past lives are really up right now. Really up in terms of? Uh, we're feeling them. Oh, 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 up inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, for sure. And I think what's super interesting also, let's even look at this life. What I teach a lot is it's very important, in my opinion, take what resonates, but it's very important to own every facet of the prismatic Suzanne in this incarnation as well. Meaning it's important for me to own the fact that I can be a horrible, nasty, awful, judgmental witch even though I don't want to be that, but I have the capacity. So I don't want to not honor the fact that that's a fractalization of my potentiality, because if I don't honor that, I'm scared of it. So if mm -hmm. I'm scared of it, I'm actually drawing attention to it. So when we're in these lives, it's really important for us to do almost a life review before we're even going through the so-called tunnel so that we can understand, oh, I'm actually honoring all fractalizations of myself with no judgment attached and it neutralizes everything it's pretty fascinating work I always say okay so this is a part of me that i haven't integrated it's interesting that it's coming up now because yeah. if i say that something's interesting my mind immediately starts to examine it you know i'll <laughs> say like well, okay so what brought it up yeah. okay so what made me say that Mm -hmm. What made me do that? And then I'll go, well, I'll look at that again later. I'll just send some light to that part of myself so it can heal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just not judge, right? Right. Because it's coming up for some good reason, I'm sure. I just don't always know the reason at first. Well, and oftentimes it has to do with the belief system that we're handed from the beginning. For example, if I'm the one in the family that's known as the good girl, mm -hmm. you know, there's got to be a fractal part of me that doesn't want to be the good girl. And exactly. wants to be the bad girl. So I'm always afraid of showing that side of myself. And yet it will kind of haunt me energetically and kind of battery wear me down inside energetically by not doing it. So I'm not saying jump in and be a bad girl. I'm just saying honor the fact that you could you could have that choice if you chose. Right. Right. Because it makes a conflict as soon as you define yourself, it starts to create a conflict because the opposite of that exactly. comes into play, which exactly. is back to alchemy. And how do you put the two opposite parts of yourself together? Yeah. And part of that is accepting both of them. Well, and I think it's kind of really freeing to know if I wanted to be a horrible witch for a minute, that's awesome. But also fully understanding that I create my own cause and effect. And this is when we get really adult and responsible about energy, because I can certainly <laughs> be that, but I'm the one that's going to have the cause and effect and a ripple factor, right? And I have a story for that because we keep going back to Walmart when my children were like, I don't know, young teenager, young son. I was did not want to go to Walmart. That was the only store they wanted to go to. And I had all this stuff to buy. And I just began to get into a worse and worse mood. And the lights started blinking up and down. Then the cash registers wouldn't work. Finally, we got out of the line and the doors wouldn't open. And I hit it as hard as I could. Well, not as hard as I could, but let's say I hit it with energy. All the doors fell out. What? And my daughter, my daughter said, it's really good that no one believes in witches anymore. I wouldn't have a mommy. You know, they no. fell off their, their tracks. No kidding. That is yeah. hysterical. Oh, my God. I know, but that's an example of being in a terrible mood and misusing your power. Yeah. 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 But it, it was it, pretty it, funny that my I, children said that, I thought. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of cool to know on the back of your head you could do it if you needed to, right? If you got I know. That was like, I hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> All the cameras are trying to catch. Who did that? Who did that? I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So that's what I mean. You can't help it. You just do it some of the time and you've got to figure out how to balance sure. that. If I can do things like that and get upset and blow out light bulbs, there are a lot of good things I can do. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's pretty. Yeah. Cool. That's not oh. good or bad. It just is. But that's sort of a fun example of some of the things that we do. Okay. Get down, puppy. Oh, get down. 
<laughs> to come and be on the show with us, I guess. Hey, give me some camera time, mom. Yeah. So what else would you want to tell people about this? I was going to ask you, what are your, um, you know, your feelings on that people are really sort of agitated and off because of the actual fact that our globe itself is activating, meaning I'm doing a lot of work with ley lines, portals, um, stargates, etc. And we have all of our ancient sites that are coming back online. And I think if you don't study that, I think that's confusing for people, right? Right. Because they don't know what the heck is happening. So do you have the same feeling I do that a lot of people are having really big health problems, agitation, fear, et cetera, just because the globe planet itself is active? And the ley lines are moving. When I talk to the wolves, they show them to me and they're moving away from some of the places that we might say there is a lot of political power at this point in time. They're like, Shoop, we're not going to stay there. Awesome. And then I know in one class, just for fun, I said, we'd go to Avalon and it was like, it was so real. It was real. We were there. So that's what I mean about ancient things opening up. There are real places in the time space continuum that we've read about or we're studied about that are very magical and they seem to be reactivating to me. Oh, totally. Totally. And I really, really believe that's happening. And not only on the planet, the activation on the planet is finally now going into the Stargate situations, meaning the cosmos. That's why our astrology is going bonkers. I uh, know. These are activating because this is where I work. And so if you're working here and I'm working here, then we're opening up those cylindrical containers that used to be part of our so-called norm so that we could astral travel and go to other existences and universes. And those were hijacked and shut down and reversed, et cetera. And I think this is the exciting stuff that I work with my membership on to say, this stuff is real. You're Mm -hmm. never going to feel it, you know, in your 3d life, you're not going to see it on the news world news tonight is not going to report. We've got a (laughs) Stargate opening, you know, but your body's going to take a hit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, all these places are becoming accessible again. I yeah. was trying to think about Blavat. I think um, Helena Blavatsky wrote about it in a lot of her books, going to India and talking about these places where they took her, where they were activated, and she saw all these masters and visions and things like that. And then it was for a while, everything was shut down and pretty flat, but it's opening back up again. Right, right. And I think that that's super exciting, but it also takes a lot out of the human body. And if Mm -hmm. we aren't studying again, like you said, take a class, get in a group, understand what's happening. Because if you don't know that there's bigger energies and you're not discerning, especially if you're an empath, you're going to get your rear end kicked in terms of (laughs) now my bones are hurting again. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And then you're going to go quite possibly to general medicine and they're going to say, we can't find anything. And then you're going to go, now I really am dying. So, you know, then we're manifesting all kinds of stuff that we don't need to manifest. Yeah. It takes a lot of physical energy. I will say that one thing I've noticed is that when I hear that I'm tired or my body says it's tired, I just stop and lie down and read or take a nap. I don't push it like I used to. Yeah, (laughs) me too. And my whole life, it's the first time I've ever done that. Me too. And this is the year where I'm literally listening to. And I thank you for saying that because I, I vacillate between really get your butt up, Susan, because I still can slip into that A personality, go, go, do it. Me too. You know, but man, this year has been like, just cut your schedule back. Just take that day off. Mm -hmm. Just down early. Really? It just kicks your butt if you don't. It's like having a virus. Yes. And yet, I've been super healthy, knock on wood, and everybody's got the actual viruses, and yet I'm not having any of that, but I still feel a lot of it. That's what I'm saying. If I don't, if I rest, I feel amazing. Yes. If I don't rest, and I'm always a person who slept six hours and never really done anything. You know, I've never needed much time to rest or anything like that. Me either. Yeah. And so it's so weird. (laughs) Good. I'm glad to hear that. What about appetites and things? Is that changing for you? Comes and goes. Like sometimes I'll go and like be, whoever give me that. Thank you. She can cut this out. Um, Sometimes I'll go on like a totally healthy diet and I'll be wonderful with it. And then I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to go get a steak. Yep. I agree. I'm doing the same thing. And the other thing I'm noticing is I'm not doing a lot of supplements and yet then all of a sudden it'll be like, Oh, now I need this. Or I, I cut a whole lot of things out that I was doing. I'm not cleansing as much as I used to. I'm just being kind of 
a normal person in terms mm -hmm. of not necessarily going overboard with a lot of the, um, I guess, the holistic pro protocols, maybe we right. should so yeah, I, it, which has been odd for me also, but I'm really in just listening intuitively and saying, you don't need that right now. You don't need that right now. And it's like, hmm. and I think that's part of the cool journey is to be able to have the faith and the trust in your body's messaging. Right. And so it's like sometimes too, I just am so good and wonderful about drinking water. And then I'll go like, I feel really bad. What's the matter with me? And I'll look, I haven't opened a water bottle in two days. I mean, yeah. no wonder I feel like this. Isn't that funny? Yeah. 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 Doing the same thing. And most days I drink a liter at least. So, I mean, we're like, oh, hang on. River, I'm sorry. Come on over here and stop. Did you just really want to be a part of this broadcast? I was just going to say, maybe he's, got some, maybe he's got something to say. <laughs> I know. I think that's because the dogs across the street are running around. I apologize, Emily. So what about your wolves? Do they talk to you every day? Yes, and they have been very, very strong about things. They've been talking to me about the ley lines for a long time. Really? And one of the things that they told me about is that when we could really manifest things and we were super magical, that the stars were in certain positions and that a lot of the stars and the planets are moving back into the kind of formation that will allow that soon if we've been doing the work. That's interesting. So I don't know how much we talked last time that I do a lot of grid work, um, multi grid work out in the out, multiverses. And I know oftentimes when my head, I do it telepathically and I know when my head is out there doing work and there's a lot of times I'm pulling stars and mm -hmm. I'm pulling constellations. So that's interesting that you're saying that because I can feel it's almost like a Medusa line, you know, like a right kind of a thing, but I can feel my own head going, okay, you still got like three degrees. And I think that sometimes <laughs> I think I'm a nut, but I really do believe we're doing that. We're pulling those constellations through the grids differently now. I do too. And I also feel like the stars are beaming a lot of light. I know when I was a child, I could look at the stars and if I made a wish that would come true, I would feel a beam of light coming into me. Oh, and I feel that they're beginning to beam again, if that makes sense. Like they were quiet for a while and now they're beaming again. And the sun feels different to me. Also. Oh, the sun's totally different. And it's in a different position. And I can tell from my garden because they're all leaning out way to the left. Yeah. Those same plants grew straight up a couple of years ago. I do think it's important for the human to really do some studying on the sun and really understand, you know, some of the programming that we've been handed on the sun and start to really, I've been making an effort to go out in between clients and just sit, even if it's for, you know, a minute or three and really work with the sun differently so that our eyes can have a different experience, that our skin can have a different experience. And so it's being smart about it and it's being open to some concepts. I don't think we have to go down every rabbit hole in the world and conspiracy theory, but I do think our sun is coming back to really a better strength for us and who and what we are supposed to be originally. And that's that what it says in these old stories that we were much closer to the sun. Yeah. And our, and our humanness needed it more in turn, you know, we always talk about vitamin D, blah, blah. But I mean, I think the attachment to it is changing. And I think that's super interesting. I still haven't made great friends with the moon quite the same. Yeah. It's just not working. <laughs> no. <laughs> I do my best <laughs> that I just kind of giggle at. But well, I really feel the moon because of the wolves. And they ah. have told me that be when the moon is full, it charges all the particles with light, including the waves in the ocean. Okay. So when those particles are filled with light, it's really easy to send messages. And then if we can stay calm and not react to the moon and everyone else, it's a really good time to send out our manifestations because the light waves carry it out to the universe. And I actually don't get affected by full moons. I get affected by the new moon. Mm -hmm. So what particleization is happening then? Nothing. It's, it's quiet. It's a void. I can tell you this because I've gardened for years. If you cut things back when the moon is waxing, including your hair, it grows faster. If you do it when it's waning, like say I cut the roses back and I plant seeds, they're not even going to come up till the moon is, you know, till we're in that second week of the moon waxing. Okay. Everything gets still. It's like it's an empty point, a still point. It's a okay. void. Yeah. 
So wait, so we don't want to cut in the void or we do want to cut in the void? We want to cut when the moon is getting big. Okay. Okay. Because it's like feeding it, obviously. Okay. Right. When there's no moon, it, it, there's no growth. I've tried a zillion times cutting things back and planting seeds. Nothing happens. Okay. Interesting. Did you have any conversation with your wolves about the actual plant and animal kingdom, more so the animal kingdom, in terms of... In my opinion, some of the animals, well, lots of the animals are leaving planet right now. And I mean, lots. I mean, yeah. I want a lot of clients who have animals that are dying or sick or whatever in droves right now. And do your um, wolves give you information on why that's happening? Because I kind of have my own thoughts on Well, that. a lot of times their dying precedes a change that's coming into our lives. And when right. animals go, they take all the toxicity in the environment with them. And they send us a very good wish and they don't leave us. They're just not the same realm. Exactly. And I think a lot of this has to do in mass. If we talk in mass, I think a lot of the animals are leaving planets so that they can actually come back more activated because, Mm -hmm. because of the fact that they're almost like a flash drive for the human, especially if they're a pet, it's very difficult because they are, they're sucking the toxins, they're sucking the emotion, they're sucking all of that. And then their flash drive is done and they leave. But I don't think that's originally the plan for the animal kingdom. I think the animal kingdom was the glue for us to actually find the heart of the earth itself. It was the, it was the telepathic energetic glue. And I don't think a lot of the animals are sitting around waiting, being these flash drives any longer. And they're choosing from a soul's perspective to just go, I'm out so that I can come back in activated. Does that? Yeah. Yeah. And when you're in a better place, I'll come and be with you again. Right. Okay, good. I'm glad that I, that's exactly, I've never asked anybody that because that's my take on it. And that's what I tell all my. Well, animals reincarnate. They get yeah. tired helping yeah. us so much. They rest for a while. They come back to us. And but I think I, the same thing is happening with our trees and our rocks and our water, etc. And I think that this is just, uh, I believe this ascension process has to do with returning us to that oneness of our plant and animal kingdom that was so shut down. And that was purposeful so that we weren't connected to the earth. Now the earth is activating and it's going the other way. So it's interesting. Yeah. That that can come up. And I think another thing with animals leaving is a lot of people are not connected to the earth and that's twice as much work for animals. Right. Right. Exactly. And they're, they're doing a lot of work for the all. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I think this is the same case, Julie, with people, too, in the long run here. We're going to see through the ascension process lots more death, and we're already seeing it. Lots more, you know, really critical, faster deaths, quicker deaths. My hospice efforts, oh, my God, in the days (laughs) back even 10 years ago, I would be doing one hospice patient for weeks. Now it's like days if you got that, right? Right. People are leaving planet way quicker because they've got stuff to do to come back at a different frequency, and they will not be able to maintain the frequency here if they've got that much going on. And so I I can honor and respect that, but I think that scares a lot of people right now. I think so too. And I know I always get, always want to cry when I see big trees being cut down for a subdivision. But one day when I was driving like that, I heard, don't you realize that an entire tree could grow back in a few days? And I thought, no, but I'll think about it. Really? Yeah, that's a good way. Yeah, I don't know if it really is possible, but it certainly never, it certainly had never occurred to me before. And I thought, I bet if we had, you know, 100,000 people meditating on it, it might happen. We don't know. The thing that I've done in the past that I think anyone could invite themselves to think about, too, is that if that tree affects you empathically, what I've done also is go up to the tree and, and even if it's in the process of getting, you know, destroyed and or if it's got some mess still left that they just took it. I oftentimes say, let's just give your information through the root system to the tree next to you or across the street, or my trees Mm -hmm. in my yard can help you. So it's a sharing. Yeah, that's a great idea. Well, we could probably talk about this for a long time, but we're getting to the end of the hour. So why don't you tell them your website and what you have that you're doing now that they might want to participate in? Sure. Thank you for asking. So everything's just under my name. So it's S. Worthly. So S W O R T H L E Y dot com. All my books are on there. Both books are on there. My classes. I'm just revving up my Peru tour for Jan, uh, February 25. Uh, yeah. So everything you can find my Vibe Tribe membership. And then we're all over YouTube also. So just look for me under YouTube and our Energy Unleashed podcast comes out weekly. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. 
And thank you so much for being a guest. For those of you who want to find me, I'm at onetrueself.com, onetrueself.com. Sign up for the free newsletter and send me an email and ask about classes or readings if you'd like some help. So thank you so much, Suzanne. I really appreciate it. Namaste. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you for listening to the Power of Inspiration and Awakening Radio with Julia Griffin to master a higher frequency for a new state of mind. Join us next time as Julia takes us deeper into the memory of the moments of light where transcendence and enlightenment emerge. The memory of the jewel of consciousness is always lived within you to tap into waves of energy and create huge changes by imagining the beauty of the vision and desires that are hidden in the heart. Learn to find your way back to nature, beauty, and your own heart, which holds the secrets of your existence and future. To discover more about Julia's adventures, animal communication, and the teaching she brings to every show, visit OneTrueSelf.com. That's OneTrueSelf.com. That's O-N-E, TrueSelf.com.